Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Cost Control for Construction Projects. In this module, we are going to be looking at short-term schedules. We're going to be talking about how short-term schedules can, when used efficiently, save a lot of money. We're going to start out in this particular video looking at the traditional method of short-term look-ahead schedules in construction projects. When done well, it can be very helpful in saving uh, money and making the company much more efficient. Uh, when done not so well, it definitely is going to be uh, problematic. But I will sort of leave us off with some, some thoughts in this particular regard uh, of how the world is changing and how the construction industry is changing. And then we'll look at in the next video, uh, lean construction short term uh, planning and what we call the last planner system developed through the Lean Construction Institute and the work of uh, Ballard and Howell. But for now, let's look at traditional short-term schedules. So uh, we'll do an overview of the methodology. Uh, we'll reconcile with the baseline schedule. We'll discuss that reconciliation and how that needs to be done. And uh, of course, some of the advantage, it's going to ensure organization if we do it well, and it's going to ensure consistency in the application. We want to ensure consistency in the application where traditionally, sometimes we run into problems if it's not executed well. Uh, so we want to also tie together all the learning that we've been discussing in this particular course up to this point. Uh, as this is really getting down to execution level when we talk about the traditional short-term schedule management. So the purpose of short-term schedule is to really plan the resources in the work that's coming up in the short term. And as I've mentioned before in courses that I teach and classes that I've done with you, uh, you know, the site superintendent on a project really tends to take a shorter view of things because they are very close and in tune to the work that is coming up. So work that is coming up to say the next milestone, they're much more in tune to that than say work that is coming up uh, a year from now. Project managers, on the other hand, are very attuned to the long term uh, milestones for the project as they're dealing with clients who are very demanding in the sense that they're very concerned about meeting major phase dates and milestone dates uh, to ensure the project will be ready or portions of the project will be ready when they need to use them. So our short-term look-ahead schedules are fundamentally important for that, plus the fact that when we're doing our original baseline uh, schedule, we don't really know the nuanced details of how things are going to be executed. What we're doing is we're allocating activities, we're breaking it down, and we're figuring out time frames and durations based on all the elements that we've talked about in this course, things such as uh, historical data, things such as experience, uh, hopefully consultations with the subtrades, but very often in the traditional methodology, uh, we haven't even procured some of the subtrades when we're developing that original baseline schedule. So when we're doing the short-term look-ahead schedules, at that point, we have procured those subtrades. And we are trying to make sure that those subtrades are going to fit the actual schedule allotments that have been made. So the focus is on also identifying any potential constraints that may be coming up and trying to make sure that if we know about them far enough in advance, we can remove those constraints so that it doesn't prevent us from being able to complete the work. So this is where we involve the PMs, the superintendents and the four person uh, to ensure various four persons to ensure the work gets done and done in a timely fashion that meets our requirements and is going to satisfy the overall baseline schedule uh, milestones that have been set. And so when I say traditional scheduling, kind of, you know, because it's kind of all over the map in some ways, but we do have this master schedule that we develop, uh, which is the baseline schedule that we've discussed. And then we have phase scheduling, which is kind of more detailed up to uh, milestones. So that might that could take the role of a three month short term schedule, perhaps up to a milestone date, depending on the lengths of the project. 
And then we have our really short-term look ahead schedules. Probably the most popular would be the two week look ahead, but you know, there's no look ahead police out there. It might be three weeks, etc. cetera. And you know, under the traditional methodology. And then what you're doing is you're trying to really sort of detail that out, get commitments of the trades that are involved in the work. So this may have been developed without the involvement of the trades or may have involved some of the major uh, trades, you know, maybe your mechanical systems trade, maybe your curtain wall supplier, etc. cetera. Uh, your, if you don't do the forming work yourself, maybe that trade. But other than that, probably not much more in the development of the original baseline schedule. In the phase scheduling, uh, the more trades that you've procured, because if you're, you're detailing it out for the next three months, those trades should all be involved in that because if you're not starting to get their commitments, it's running very unlikely that you're actually going to hit your targets. So can we meet the project requirements? Who is accountable? Do we understand the methodology to be used? Do we have self-efficacy? Do we have confidence that we can actually meet these um, dates? And is the network complete? Do we have everybody in place? Are the commitments made? And have we made adjustments to sequencing and maximized, or better word yet, optimized um, the order of work? Because we're going to have a lot more detail uh, two weeks out than we will at three months out. And we're going to have a lot more uh, detail at three months out than we're going to have at the end of the project. And I think that concept that I just mentioned is very important for you to understand. You have more detail, more, or you should have more detail, more information as the work gets closer. And you've got to really, really tap into that. But ideally, you're really going to be getting that information and detailing it and more information as you move along through the system. So short-term look-ahead schedules, as I said, they can be two weeks, three weeks, six weeks, three months. And three months would be the example that I use for the phase scheduling here. And uh, as the work gets closer, the level of detail gets um, stronger, or at least that's the way it's supposed to play out. Some of the things that we do in traditional short-term uh, planning is we uh, do what we talked about earlier in the course. If it's done well, and again, I'm trying to paint a picture of when it's done well, we do management by wandering around, MBWA. We make sure that we know what's currently going on on our project so that we can really understand what's coming up in the two weeks. And we will tr traditionally have a weekly meeting where we will work out the details of what's coming up in the next two weeks. And that is being pulled out from our phase schedule or our updated master schedule and we'll show how those need to play in together uh, because if they're kind of operating in separate worlds it becomes a major problem and if you're used to how a major sort of our update master schedule works then you'll get a better understanding of how this plays into it um, all the major trades are involved in these weekly meetings that are in the work coming up because if there's a problem, you want to know about it here. Now, traditionally, quite honestly, it kind of is done somewhat autocratically by some site superintendents, meaning they've got this pressure coming down that the original baseline schedule had specific dates that were allocated. When the contracts were signed and the procurements done with these trades, they signed off that they would reasonably try to fulfill those dates. But you know what? When they're signing those contracts, they really want the work. And when they really want the work, they're more likely to say yes to a lot of things. And even in short-term uh, schedules like two-week look-aheads, if there's a lot of pressure on them, very often they'll say they can do it, but they don't really think they can. And that's just setting yourself up for failure. So that's kind of some of the weak points under the traditional uh, method. Where it's done well is the superintendent isn't really sort of, uh, you know, being hitting them on the head with a, with a hammer saying you've got to get this done. Uh, they're asking questions. And we've talked about the five whys in previous uh, lectures. 
And the five whys is, well, why can't you get it done because of this, this? Why can't you get it done because of that? And really getting down to the root cause. And then maybe if it's something that the site superintendent can do to alleviate that problem, then they can work at removing those obstacles, removing those bottlenecks that might be preventing them from doing that. So then it takes on somewhat of a more collaborative uh, engagement. And so in those cases, under the traditional method, that's where really good site superintendents working collaboratively with the PM and the, and the trade partners um, are reasonably successful using those methods. But there's a lot of times where it's not done that way. And, you know, traditional construction doesn't have the best reputation for hitting budgets and hitting timeframes. And we definitely know about that as our, we've got evolved in this course about the connection between time and money and efficiencies and waste and value. Uh, we've been discussing that the whole way through. So traditional methods have their um, limitations unless they're done really, really well. And as I said, you wanna make sure that you do the management by wandering around, that you check out the site ahead of time and that you know what's going on so that you have a good understanding of that. You're making observations, you're being very proactive, you're looking at productivity rates that may not be producing what you expected. Uh, you're having discussions with those trades early on, as early as possible as you're taking notice of these things. And that will definitely help you to be more successful in this area. So what you're really doing is you're taking your baseline schedule you are uh, basically um, filtering out information for the work coming up. So if it's a two week look ahead, you'd be filtering out two weeks of work. You would be detailing that, really finely detailing that work out in your look ahead schedule. Uh, you have to know what just happened. So really a two week look ahead is looking two weeks forward and you're really cognizant of what just happened right? Because it's something that you thought would happen doesn't happen. Well, it's going to have to be scheduled into this portion. Uh, so the two week look ahead or a three week look ahead is always adding a week of what just happened and where are we at? We have to know where we're at. And we spent a lot of time in this course understanding the status date and understanding where we're at on a master schedule. Well, we have to understand where we're at when we're planning out the next few weeks. So this information is gathered and then it is dealt with, then it is really becomes what the different trades, the four persons of the trades are involved in our weekly meetings to make sure that we get their commitment for the work coming up. And they're gonna be more understanding of what's coming up early next week than at the end of the second week. That's just natural, it's like I ask you, what are you gonna to do tomorrow? You have a better idea than what you're gonna do on Thursday or what you're gonna do a week and a half from now. So that's how scheduling uh, kind of works too. We have more clarity as we get close to the work, but the goal is to get keep increasing the clarity as we get closer and closer, strengthening that commitment uh, in that process. Uh, so what we need to do then is, if this is what's been happening, we need to take this information, what's been happening, we also need to coordinate it with things like our cranes, like our material hoist, like our excavating equipment, uh, and we have to prioritize those pieces of equipment, particularly pieces of equipment and items that are on the critical path. So this short-term schedule, which is filtered out of this, the, the baseline schedule, is getting that data. And at this point in the course, I think this should become clear, clearer to you now. Uh, so we're filtering out that information. We've got some more clarity. Uh, that's being filtered to ensure we maximize out the use of our equipment, that we minimize bottlenecks, that we efficiently use it, that we identify any of those um, uh, long work in progress items. And we take that information of how we're doing and we feed that back up into the master schedule so that we can update the master schedule. Because the master schedule needs to keep up to date with what's going on in the project. And so when we update the master schedule, then we also can look at recoveries and how we get that time back. And that recovery process can be a collaboration between here and between here. And we've talked about the direct method of recovery in this course. 
which is to detect along the critical path, to look sooner rather than later, to look for the no or low cost solution, and to experiment, to try it, to discuss it and get commitments of the trades that are going to be involved in it. And if we do that, then this whole teamwork aspect of collaboration will be helpful. So under the traditional methods, when that part is done well, it really does help uh, get the projects to be done well. Um, so that's giving you a sort of a good input um, there. So there's major advantages. Done well, it forces organization. It provides clear updates to the client. So this would be done accurately. Ensures resources and equipment are prioritized. So we're doing that there. Uh, everyone with lots of construction experience is familiar with this uh, method. I guess the, the downside is, that, and you know, for those that kind of like to have command and control, is it definitely the traditional sort of method is that because you're developing this very much in isolation, it means it's really putting a lot of pressure on the procurement process and the trades to meet those time frames. Not that other methodologies don't still have that, but it's just a little bit more on the command and control side from that perspective uh, when we think about that. So if we look at the disadvantages, we can kind of reverse a lot of this. You know, it's often done in a more autocratic way, my way or the highway kind of way. Not When it's done well, I'm gonna say that's minimized. Uh, when it's not done well, I'm gonna say that's maximized. And I will say in the construction industry, there's a fair bit of that maximization that goes on, which in our current time frame, with the advancements that have been made in technology and the change of the way that we do things and the level of complexity in construction, I don't, I'm not convinced that have operating in a project in an autocratic way is the best way anymore. Uh, so that's just a point that I'll bring into uh, us, but you working in the construction industry, you see a lot of different methodologies and please put comments if you've experienced different things below uh, or you disagree or you agree. Uh, that's very, very helpful feedback um, going forward um, this way because there is this, this evolution that is taking place, evolution, revolution, whatever you wanna call it in construction with regards to how we run our projects. And I've got a follow-up video to this which will be which will be discussing the last planner system, which takes a different kind of viewpoint on things, which I think is much more fitting to the changes in technology, the advancements of building information uh, modeling, the higher expectations of clients, the levels of complexity on our projects, and to improve productivity weight, rates and reduce waste and improve cost control. So all of these elements playing together. Um, not that you can't do it with this, but I think that there's other ways that are becoming more mainstream. Still have a way to go. Still have a ways to go on the mainstream. So that's why this is important to understand right now, especially if you're fairly new to the industry. I think if you're ingrained in the industry, you kind of uh, understand that. So does not fully engage all the parties involved. Baseline schedule often done by the project team without adequate input. And all industries are changing to better reflect the complexities of the digital world. And this does not uh, fully reflect those changes that are taking place. So that's kind of the intro and uh, the version of the traditional short-term look ahead schedules. I'll put a link to uh, the next video in the description notes so that you can just quickly go to the next video, which will be um, looking at the last planner system. Then we can compare and contrast a little bit. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and keep on trucking out there in the construction industry. Bye for now.